God bless. Hello. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, I'm Brother Evan from Cairns Fellowship. Um, yeah, I'm just uh, going to have a look at some scriptures today. Um, thinking about my testimony today, I uh, was trying to think of a, a good talk and um, maybe something um that i could encourage people with but um nothing came to me so <laughs> so i thought you know i went through some scriptures about um you know just what what has encouraged me in so far um being just new in the lord so sometimes it's it's good to see like what people are, um what scriptures that um they're putting their their trust in and it's what's encouraging them in the Lord and and what what are they doing to um you know, to overcome you know and that's the good thing about testimonies it's it's a test testimony of the Lord working in our life and yeah just I just thought I'd share a little bit about my life before I came to the Lord and how it's changed um yeah since receiving the holy spirit in 20 in september 2020 um so yeah i i just have some notes so sorry if i'm gathering my thoughts a little bit yeah so i i guess what i was thinking is that maybe from a worldly perspective or a, a, a it seemed like before i um I'm, i had a good job you know i i had a degree i had um lived in a nice house you know I, I had you know healthy kids and lots of things maybe on the surface looked like i had a good life um i i finished and graduated my degree i worked very hard as a mature age student i went back to uni in my early 30s late 20s early 30s i ended up landing a good career um you know, my life sounded pretty typical, pretty normal as I was working towards that sort of success. Um, actually, it, it wasn't really good. <laughs> so I, um, you know, these things never really worked well for me. Like I was doing, you always want more things. And so, yeah, I actually wasn't happy. I, um, I wasn't happy in my work. Um, nothing was happening there. I was looking for more money, um, even taking risks in my in investing and well, more so gambling really, but investing in things I didn't know about. And um, yeah, also my relation, I was working a lot of jobs trying to achieve that goal of having money and yeah, just um, pretty stressful time. And yeah, had, um, a relationship breakdown also in 2018 um the relationship i had with my daughter's mother um broke down um, we separated we got ended up getting divorced and so i had issues dealing with that um yeah i, I pretty much lost most of my money there and during the covid lockdown i had a lot of time to think about um my life <laughs> So that was in early 2020. Um, yeah, so I just thought I'd share a little bit of stories, but then what kind of scriptures sort of aligned with when I started to um, come to my senses and come um, start to look to the Lord? Um, it was a gradual process. Like I, I, um, I was pretty strong will, so I was always willing to keep working at my life to try and improve and get better. And I was looking to always wanting to improve in whatever way I could in my, with my willpower. And um, yeah, so I, I actually was pretty bored during the lockdown and I um, started talking to Meryl online. And one of the things we were just friends and we were, one thing we we're talking about is goals. And, and I was thinking about it and, and she wanted me to write down my goals on a piece of paper. I was like, this is ridiculous. Okay, but I did it anyway. And um, so I wrote down my 
my goals. You, you know, she said we you should write down different goals, like career goals, um, uh, personal goals, relationship goals, spiritual goals, and it sounded a bit silly, but I wrote them all down. And and um, yeah, I I looked at the sheet of paper and I, I was sort of I had a like it in different sections and the last section was the spiritual goals and I was like I just looked at it when it was all out there in front of me I was I just thought you know that should be my main thing you know that should be at the top of my priorities and in my spiritual goals I said I wanted to receive the Holy Spirit it's something that I always knew about since being a child um being raised in the revival fellowship i um i, I left when my parents left when i was in my mid-teens and but i was wanting the holy spirit i never received it and so it was always something i knew that i i wanted i knew about it i knew what would happen to people who didn't have it and i um yeah it was something i carried with me in my life that I, in my heart I, it was something i wanted maybe one day just before I die or something. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of wisdom there. But um, yeah, but when I saw everything on the piece of paper, I just saw, thought, you know, if I could receive the Holy Spirit and I believe that all my goals would fall into place. So that's, that's what I had the thought that occurred to me. In Proverbs 16, verse 7, if we could turn there, In Proverbs 16, verse 7, it says, when a, a man, oh, are we bringing up the scripture? Thank you. Proverbs 16, verse 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Oh, that, not that one, sorry, verse 8. Um. Actually, verse nine, verse nine. So a man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directs his steps. So that's what I was trying to get at there. So a man's heart might have a lot of goals and plans, um, but without the Lord, we cannot go in the right direction. So we can have in our heart, we want to do this and that, go here and there, but without the Lord... <laughs> to direct our steps, we cannot walk in that direction. So, um, yeah, that's, I didn't know that scripture at the time. It's just one I put to that thought that I had at that time. So, and at that time, I, I had a lot of dramas and um, my ex-partner wanted to actually relocate, relocate my daughter to another country. So I wasn't going to have that relationship I, I was hoping for and that family I was hoping for with, with at least my daughter and so yeah I had to do something about that so I started some legal processes there to try to keep my relationship with my daughter it got very expensive it was very stressful um it went on for a couple of years it was yeah it no matter how much money or stress or whatever I put into that problem, nothing changed. And it was just a co conflict. I was worried. I was, yeah, there was just no peace there at all. Um, yeah, it was something for me that was really affecting me. Um, I didn't see how I was going to be a father with a, to a daughter in another country. And I, um, I was actually attending a different church at the time because I was starting to get interested in scriptures and the word of God and so I um, attended a different church but they mentioned a scripture and the scripture really spoke to me I think on a different level to what they were talking about but it spoke to me personally when Matthew 11 verse 28 in Matthew 11 28 you know, I, um, I read the, this scripture and it was a bit of a turning point for me to repent. Um, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, 
and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so what I thought when I read this, I thought uh, I, I kind of analyzed myself or assessed myself against this. And I thought um, I am not light or, you know, I'm not at rest. I, I feel burdened. Uh, I got a lot of things going on and, you know, things that I'm doing are not helping. Um, and I just knew that I didn't have Christ. I knew that he was not in my life. I knew I was not a Christian and I did not know Jesus. Um, based on this, I just assessed myself against this, that if he was in my life, that this would happen, you know? And so I know that I, he's got nothing to do with my life. And so I got on my knees in my home and I, um, I just prayed out, called out to the Lord and, um, yeah, just kind of poured my heart out to the Lord and and I prayed directly to, to the Lord, to Jesus in a prayer for help. And um yeah, I just had um yeah, time there where I knew that I, I just needed the only way I could I could um the only help I I just needed him. <laughs> I just I just read this, I knew he could help, and I just um yeah, during that that prayer, I just felt like um, like layers of weights were being stripped off my back. Um, I had a bit of a maybe it sounds a bit like a strange experience, but yeah, it just felt like loads were ta being taken off my back, and um, yeah, it was just more of a humbling thing, a bit of a touch from the Lord, maybe just that first step in repentance and. Not sure what it was, but you know, it was a powerful thing that prayer, and I just remember it very clearly. But um, in Psalm one hundred and seven, verse eight, Psalm one hundred and seven, verse eight, I just read this you know later um there's quite a few scriptures about you know him setting captives free and releasing us from the yoke of bondage and uh, making our burdens light like we just read and yeah i just felt like that was a little a part of it you know the lord was starting to take some of my burdens from me and and help me a little bit um and start to set me free um but i do believe that you have to be spirit filled to be completely saved but yeah i just think i got a i was going in the right direction at this point and uh, i got a bit of a touch but from the lord but in um psalm 107 verse 8 oh that men would praise the lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men for he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the word of the Lord and, con content and contemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labour. They fell down, and there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands in sunder. So that's just the releasing of the of bands of, you know, keeping you captive, all these burdens. Verse 15, oh, that man would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he had broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron and sunder. Verse 17, fool, um, fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat and they draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble and he saves them out of their distresses. He sent his word which is Jesus, and he healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that man will praise the, the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. 
and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. So, yeah, I can praise the Lord for um, from that point he started to move in my life. Um, I had an answered prayer. I started putting cares to the Lord and I had um, um, some peace in a situation there where I was really just praying for my um, my daughter to stay so I could be a father and um, for my ex-partner just to be content and happy and be blessed where she is and um, it ultimately stay where in Cairns where I live. Um, and yeah, I just got a phone call one day and I just, um, my ex-partner just told me everything that I prayed. She said, I'm happy here, I'm content and um, yeah, I want you to have more time and appreciate everything you're doing and I don't want to relocate anymore. And she just told me everything that I would pray, almost in the exact same order I prayed it. So I was just really amazed um, with that. Um, yeah, for the first time in a couple of years, I had a bit of peace there in that situation. And um, yeah, and I just knew that um, that the Lord's helping me there. And I yeah, I just really praise the Lord for that. Um, yeah, so it was very kind of a personal thing. Maybe it doesn't really mean much to you. Like it's not something physical, like a healing but or something that... But to me, it was something that, um, you know, was really burdening me. So, you know, the Lord works with us on a personal level. Um, it just made me want the Lord, make me want, I'm uh, sorry, wanted me, made me want to follow the Lord more. And um, yeah, I was attending another church and I was looking into things because I was, I really loved the word and I was reading, but um, I, w I wasn't, Feel like I felt like I was filling up, um, but it wasn't staying with me. Like I was attending, but I wasn't, um, I was draining. Like I was get filled up a little bit on like attend on a Sunday. And then by Monday or Tuesday, I was back to my normal self again, um, which, you know, was, you know, just not just empty. And, you know, I didn't have that, that fullness, um, yeah, I guess part of that emptiness is sort of, you know, you, you need something to fill that. And, yeah, usually you, you turn to alcohol or you turn to other things and, and you just know that you, you need something, you know. Um, and so, yeah, I, I knew I needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, and, you know, praise the Lord for my upbringing because I had no doubt about that. You know, some people don't have that, you know, you know, they don't know about that. And so, yeah, I just, I just knew that I needed that, you know, not many people would know that. Now I know that not many people would know that. I didn't know then, but, you know, and yeah, I, I just looked at the church I was attending and what their doctrine was. And I just knew that it, it had nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. And um, yeah, so I looked up the Revival Fellowship online um, in Cairns on their Facebook page. And I, I saw peep, uh, a young man getting baptized recently on, on the picture. And I was like, I, I could, I want to do that. Like, I could do that. That's something I could do. It's in the Bible. And, um, and uh, you know, I did try to receive the Holy Spirit as a child, but, you know, that, you know, I just know that if I get baptized, the, the scripture says, repent, be baptized. And, see the gift of the holy ghost so i just had that in my heart and i um i just knew that baptism was something i could do um to and um yeah so i got baptized like i said i think it was 27th of september 2020 and i um received the holy spirit and spoken tongues a few days after my baptism um after i um yeah worked through some of my thoughts and um, yeah, just ha had a, a humble heart there. And when, once I humbled myself um, and my thinking and just, yeah, just really um, just trusting the Lord that he'd fill me with the Holy Spirit in his time. And I just told him and prayed to him that I just keep asking and asking. I just, I was stressing about it a bit, to be honest, because I, I was praying a lot. Um, but yeah, you know, nothing happened. And 
But um, it was when I just came to peace that I just knew that I'd just keep trying and I'm not going to stop, Lord. And and I just said, I'll pray to you until I annoy you, Lord. And and I just said, I'm just happy to keep learning in the meantime. Um, I received the Holy Spirit that day. Um, and I just was walking through the park. I wasn't even praying like I was for the hours and days before. Uh, I was just walking through the park and I just said hallelujah and my tongue changed and I was just a little bit surprised at that. <laughs> I feel like sometimes I should tell people, oh, receiving the Holy Spirit's like a walk in, walk in the park. <laughs> it's, like, it's easy as a walk in the park. No, it's not. But, um, yeah, it's just when you humble yourself, the Lord will, will work with you, with your heart. And, um, yeah, so after I received the Holy Spirit, it's important, I think, that I... I went through this, but what happened was my, I told my friends and I'd be like, oh, I um, received the Holy Spirit. But um, they had their ideas about the Holy Spirit. Um, they gave me all these scriptures, like quoting all these twisted scriptures. Um, wasn't sure what to think about all these ideas. It, it caused me to doubt a little bit, I guess. And um but what it did make me do was it made me search the scriptures and um, and to try and understand it for myself because I just knew my own testimony and that offended people. But I started to get all the doubts from the world coming in. And, and so I really had to study all the scriptures about, about the Holy Spirit. And um, in doing that, I saw many times where it was saying that when people receive the Holy Spirit, they spoke in a new tongue. And um, but what really removed all my doubts was Mark 16, 15. So if we can turn there. In in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. It says, oh, we'll start in 17. And these are uh, 16, sorry, we'll start 16. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believed not shall be damned. So I thought, okay, all right, baptism is important. In verse 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Okay, so verse 16, it says, he that believes and is baptized will be saved. But to be a believer you have to have these signs. So I said, like, okay, so what's Jesus saying here? He said in verse 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. And, and this is where I was like, oh, well, okay. To be a believer, you, you must have to be able to do these things. Um, they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. So that's protection and lay hand on the sick. That's healings and they will recover. In verse 19, it says, so after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. And I, was, I was just amazed by this one because for one, it was the son of God that said it, you know, Jesus's words. And not only that, it was his parting words. You know, like if you were have going on a long journey and you needed someone to look after your house or something, you'd, you'd tell them very important things, like the most important things. Um, and so, yeah, I just saw this as that he, these were his parting words before he, he went up into heaven. And I just saw that these must be really important words. And, and I was just fully convinced by it. I was just said, Jesus said it, I believe. And, and it's always been that way for me. Whenever I have a problem, it's, it's, you can always overcome with the, the word of the Lord. And, um, yeah, I just praise the Lord for that scripture because it helped me overcome any thoughts that people or doubts that other people had. And, um, yeah, and it, like I said, it was straight from the mouth of Jesus. So you can't argue with that. And um, since then, I, I've really been praying the spirit every day. And, and um, you know, I pray a lot as well. Uh, I try to, some days when I don't pray a lot, um, 
yeah, I just don't have that peace. So I, uh, I sort of learned the hard way there that the more, the more your time you put into things, uh, the more you get out of it. Um, and yeah, and I think it, it's good because I actually had some more dramas pop up again with, uh, I thought, oh, my testimony is destroyed and all these things because um, my ex-partner wanted to relocate again to a different town. So, you know, life happens <laughs> and problems keep popping up. But um, I was a little bit thrown by that. I was got a bit angry within myself. I, I thought that it was all over, um, that it was all going to be peaceful from now. But um you know, I wasn't sure how to think, what to think about all this popping up again. And someone told me just to go and pray about it and just put it to the Lord again. And I thought, well, that, you know, yeah, yeah I just, I thought it was a bit, um, I, I guess I wasn't sure about like how that would work, you know. But anyway, I just went home and I did it. And it took me a while to actually humble myself and pray about it. Because I was, I was a little bit, um, I don't know what the word is, but yeah, yeah, I was just shocked at that that it's all happening again, you know. And um, yeah, I just prayed in the spirit, and and the scriptures say, you know, like when you grow, you're groaning in the spirit. I was kind of like fervently praying to the Lord, real, um, in the spirit. I just don't know what's happening happening to me again, Lord, and why is this coming back on me again, Lord, and. I just, um, yeah, just prayed in tongues and I, I read some words about what the Lord does for us and he, he's always there for us and um, guides us through and things and helps us overcome. And and I just prayed in the spirit and fell asleep. And um, <laughs> the next morning, I just felt amazing. Um, I, I just, I, yeah, I just left it with the Lord. I guess that's what putting it to the Lord. Sometimes it's, a prayer of asking sometimes it's um you just don't know what's going on and you don't know what to say um but praying in the spirit we know that um you know in the book of corinthians there paul says that when we pray in the spirit we speak to to god so we speak directly to god and he hears us um he knows us and um yeah that's just that personal language that we have with him um that you know, that we've been part of the Holy Spirit, you know, and um, it really worked for me. In Proverbs 3, verse 21, there's a, we'll turn there, Proverbs 3, verse 21. Actually, verse 23. And then it says, then shalt thou walk, in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. In 24, it says, When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, they shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. So I um that's what I experienced. I had the, the most amazing sleep that night, <laughs> even though I wasn't uh feeling too good before I prayed. Um, I woke up and I was peaceful and I left it with the Lord, even though. For another year and a half, I was still dealing with all these things. I knew the Lord delivered me once and he'd help me again. And that's where um, that faith comes in. And that's why I pray a lot because um, it could always be something that could come in from the side um, and just, you know, ruin your day or, you know, like you lose your peace over. So there's always those things out there in your life. It's just life, really. And, um, and, but we've got a way to escape these things. And for me, it's the word of God and it's praying in the spirit. Um, yeah, it took another year and a half, but we, I, I, um, I got a ruling last month from the court and, um, the final decision was made that my daughter is to live in Cairns and, um, I'm to have additional time with her. So I praise the Lord for that that all last month that it's all over and um and but it's you know these things happen in life sometimes it's well that one's probably just consequences of bad decisions from the past but 
the Lord even so is gracious and he helps us through things. And um and yeah, he's just yeah, I just praise the Lord for for his um more so um that everyone's happy, you know, and um yeah, just through that whole thing. I think the main thing that got me through was um was the words of the Lord again. Um yeah, even though you know, it, during this process, false accusations were made about me, my family, my church, um, all sorts of things that try to bring you down. I um, I just prayed a lot and I also, um, I just tried to be content and, um, oh, sorry, I prayed and I also prayed for her a lot um, that she'd be blessed and that um, even though she's, uh, my ex-partner was you know giving me a hard time I was just praying for her constantly that she'd be blessed in her life and in um, Luke 6 28 we turn there so when people give you a hard time and it happens it's happened to me in lots of situations at work you get a bad boss you get a bad manager or something um, I've, they actually, yeah, people have, you know, get really angry at you or, or whatever. And um, you just pray for them to be blessed. And it's amazing. Like something happens to them. I actually prayed for two of my managers to, managers to be blessed and they got promoted and went to another team. I don't have to deal with them anymore, but they're happy. So praise the Lord. And, um, but in this situation here, I just knew that the, the Lord's words and in Luke 6 28 bless them that curse you and pray for them that despitefully use you and and unto him that smiteth thee on one cheek offer also the other and him that talketh um, sorry <laughs> him that takes away thy coat um, cloak forbid not to take thy coat also in verse 30 give to every man that asks of thee and of him that taketh away from thy goods, ask not again. So, yeah, that kind of giving and expecting nothing in return. In verse 31, and as ye would that men should do to you, do also to them. In verse 32, for if you love them which love you, what thank do you have? For also love those that love them, you know, sinners also love those that love them. So it's something that even sinners can do, you know, if you're, but in verse 33, and if you do good to them, which do good to you, what thank do you have? For sinners also do the same. In verse 34, and if you lend to them of whom you have hope to receive, what thank have you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But if your enemies, oh, but sorry, and if you love your enemies and and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again, your reward shall be great, and you shall be the children of the Most Highest, for He is kind to unto the unthankful and to the evil. So yeah, I just um, I just think that you know sometimes we think that we need to get involved or we need to. Um, you yeah, take things personally, but really people who give us a hard time or aren't happy, they really need our prayers. And so, yeah, I just, I just held on to that and um, included, include, include people in my daily prayers who um, are, um, give, you know, causing me troubles. Um, and it seems to turn around because the Lord said it would. And um, yeah, I guess um, yeah, I got through all these things. So sorry, I'll just gather my thoughts. Yeah, and I, and I just praise the Lord because he's always guiding me by his word and through his spirit. In Isaiah 41, verse 13, 
Um, this is, you know, what the Lord does for us, us all. Sometimes I just have a, a simple thought. Um, you know, I might just be walking along um, and with you, with your kids or something and, and the, your kids will always hold your hands. Um, and, you know, like we are children of, and God's our father. And, and when he holds out and when we hold our child's hand, sometimes it's just because they love us or um, sometimes you hold their hand because you want to keep them safe. Like when you're crossing a road or in a car park um, that you can, you can kind of direct them. And in Isaiah 41, 13, is it for I, I, the Lord, thy God will hold thy right hand saying unto thee, fear not, I will help thee. And so, yeah, sometimes I just have that thought that when I'm going through things, um, that you don't need to worry because the Lord's got your right hand, just like a father does to a child. Um, he's directing you. And, um, yeah, we don't have to be afraid because he's helping us. So, yeah, it's just a thought there. Um, I actually, after I received the Holy Spirit, I didn't see the point in, you know, coming to church every week. I just thought, oh, actually, I might come once every two weeks. Um, sorry, after I got baptized, I didn't see the point. But after I received the Holy Spirit, I um, I actually attended everything. I don't think I've missed a meeting in two years. So <laughs> I um, I was just very hungry to hear the, the word. Um, yeah, I've been trying, I attend many things. You know, I, I work two jobs and I have kids for three or four days a week, but I, I managed to attend all my meetings in Cairns and the ones in the Philippines as well um, and attend the Bible studies in Darwin. Um, you know, that's fairly different to my first plan <laughs> is that I might attend once every two weeks. Um, and I listen to a lot of talks on the podcasts, on the um, our revival fellowship talks. And yeah, I get a lot of encouragement. And, and these are just some of the things that we, tools we can use, you know, fellowship um, and being guided by our brethren. Um, I get a lot of encouragement out of that. Um, while I was going through, you know, some, some times there, some hard times, um, you know, I'm thankful for the Philippine Fellowship for their young people's meetings. I was attending those. Um, they had them nearly most nights of the week. And yeah, I, I got a lot out of those, um, especially being young in the Lord at the time, because I only had just come to the Lord and, and I got Mariel involved in the fellowship and I, and, um, but actually I was really encouraged by the brethren here because there's not many young people in my church at the time and not many people really followed me up um, at my church and and um yeah i just not didn't couldn't relate to a lot of them as well because they're a lot older so yeah I, I um yeah i got a lot out of and a lot of encouragement out of fellowship and yeah and i thank the young people in the philippines for that um yeah and yeah hebrews 10 24 if we just turn there might finish on that i've got quite a few things but yeah just the important of um, fellowship um and let us con consider one another to provoke one another unto good works not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching yeah so i can praise the lord for everything he's done in my life uh, you know even the promotions i was looking for i got promoted um you know without much effort because it all comes from the lord there's even a scripture there that says promotions come from the lord um yeah i thank him for the hope he's given me and providing us an escape out of all these out of problems and answering my prayers and yeah i just praise the lord and i'll yeah i just can't thank him enough for what he's doing in my life and i'm very grateful for all my brethren too so i'll just leave it there praise the lord